Hello there, Tom here from The Run Testers with another running shoe versus. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature and the Hocker Mac 5. Let's take a look. The Nike Turbo Next Nature costs £145 or $150, weighs in at 253 grams or 8.9 ounces for men in a size 8, and the drop is 10 millimeters. The Hocker Mac 5 costs £130 or $140, it weighs in at 212 grams or 7.5 ounces for men in a size 8, and the drop is 5 millimeters. Since 2019, Nike fans have eagerly awaited an update to the hugely popular Pegasus Turbo 2. Now, three years later, the wait is over in the form of the Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. Like its predecessors, it's a shoe that's focused on speed, featuring a rocker design and the return of Nike's ZoomX phone in the midsole. Only this time, that midsole is made with at least 50% recycled ZoomX phone. The upper is made using flyknit yarns for a secure, breathable and lightweight fit. It features SRO2 Cushlon technology to improve the overall comfort. And on the outsole is a waffle inspired tread to provide grip and protection. The Hocker Mac 5 is the long anticipated successor to the hugely popular Mac 4 and its slightly firmer sibling, the Mac Supersonic. In the most recent version, there's an updated ProFly Plus midsole that offers a slightly softer ride for daily training runs, a leaner upper to keep the weight down, including a redesigned lay flat tongue, and longer laces than those supplied with the Mac Supersonic. It's a shoe that's designed for versatility, allowing you to go from comfortable daily miles all the way up to race day offering an excellent balance of responsiveness and cushioning. That balance is the result of a dual density midsole that combines a softer layer with a firmer rubberized outer layer. Hocker says is a shoe that has a little more umph behind it, both in performance and ride. So the tip for me in the Hocker Mac 5 is true to size. Um, I definitely wouldn't size up or down in this shoe. It's very comfortable, feels quite nicely locked down, so it's well fitted. Um, but what I would say is it's a Hoka shoe, so they can be quite narrow. So just take a, pay attention to that if you are looking at getting this shoe, because some people with wider feet do sometimes have issues with Hoka shoes. The fit for me in the Peg Turbo Next Nature is also true to size, but I would say it's quite a big shoe there's a lot of extra space in this shoe for me um, and it can feel a little bit uncomfortable I think that's partly due to this upper the upper is slightly thick it feels a little bit uncomfortable um, not as fitted and breathable as something like the Mac 5 upper um, but it's also not a particularly wide shoe so if you're sizing down in the shoe you're likely to find it getting a little bit narrow so I probably would stick true to size in this um, but bear in mind that there is quite a bit of space in the top of the shoe. So I picked these two shoes because they are both daily options that you're probably gonna pick up if you're looking for a shoe that can do a lot of different things. The sort of shoe that you'd pick up if you were going out for a 10K and you were probably gonna go out and not you're not entirely sure what sort of run you're going to do. So if you're going out to do sort of a lower uh, effort, slow, enjoyable run, these two shoes should both be able to do it. And if you want to pick up the pace and go a bit faster, again, you should be able to do it in both of these shoes. So I'll start off by talking through the Hocker Mac 5 because the Hocker Mac 5 is one of most of the run testers' favorite shoes out at the moment, especially when it comes to daily shoes. The Mac 4 was also a fantastic shoe. It hasn't got a plate in it. It just has a nice combination of two different types of midsole foam in it. Uh, one of those being the Profile Plus midsole foam. Uh, it's got a nice, breathable, lightweight upper. And overall, it's just a very good shoe if you're looking for a light, nimble option that can really pick up the pace nicely if you want it to. So I've done about 60K in this shoe so far. I've done a lot more in the Mac 4 and I absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic daily shoe. Uh, you can really put this on and do most of your runs in it and be completely happy with it. I think this shoe, it veer, in the daily market, this shoe veers towards the faster running. So if you're going out and you want to pick up the pace a bit, if you want to go towards a tempo run, even if you want to use it for race day, it's fantastic. It really is designed for running fast. But it also is pretty good at slower runs as well. That cushioning, that dual density uh, layers of midsole foam in there, really feels really comfortable as well. And if you're going out for a slower, longer run, it can do the job. It doesn't excel in that area. I think this the Hocker Mac 5 veers towards the speedier runs, 
but you can do those slow runs as well. If you've got something like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, that is probably a little bit better at tackling both of those areas. It's a shoe that's very well designed for fast running, but also there's a lot of cushioning in that shoe, so you can really enjoy a, a slower paced run or a longer, longer run. Uh, whereas I think this is more towards that speed side. Um, the other benefit of this shoe, of course, is that it hasn't got a plate in. So if you're a more traditional runner, or if you don't like training in a plate, and many people don't like training in a plate, they just want to save them for race day, this is a good option because you can really train up to a very high level in this shoe and then stick on your vapor ply or whatever you want to use for race day. And it complements it quite well without you always running in a uh, plated shoe. So yeah, I've, I think the Hocker Mac 5 is a fantastic shoe and definitely one of the top two, three all-rounders daily running shoes out at the moment. Uh, so it's definitely worth picking up this or the Hocker Mac 4. I think the shoe is a little bit lighter than that. It's a little bit more um, bounce and responsiveness in the midsole of this, but the changes are negligible if you want to save a bit of cash. If you can go and get the Hocker Mac 4 cheaper, it's probably worth doing that if you want to save a bit of money. So that brings me on to the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. Now, the Pegasus Turbo that came out a few years ago was one of the best all-rounder shoes that many people have tried. And it is very similar in many ways to the Hocker Mac 4 and Mac 5 in that it's a shoe that is designed for daily training miles, but really delivers well if you want to, to run faster. The original uh, Nike Pegasus Turbo, I did a lot of races in, I ran New York Marathon in it. Absolutely loved that shoe. It had a great combination of uh, Zumex foam, which is that sort of soft bouncy foam that you get in the Vaporfly, as well as React foam, which is a more stable foam, which you get in a lot of shoes like the Infinity and things like that to add a, add a more stable supportive ride um, to your run. The Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature is it, it isn't really the same as the original Nike Peg Turbo and Turbo 2. It uses a recycled Zumex foam in the midsole, which doesn't feel like Zumex. It feels very different to Zumex. And when I started running in this shoe, I actually I really didn't like it. And I think the main problem with that is that I was so excited at the, the, the prospect of a new Nike Pegasus Turbo coming out that I was I wanted this to be the same or if not better than, than those two shoes that were released. Problem is, it's a completely different shoe and I, I would have much rather Nike had called this something else, just called it the Next Nature or something like that instead of the Turbo because that confuses it a little bit. Because what you get with the Next Nature is a much firmer ride uh, and I think in many ways, especially when you start running in it, it's a much duller ride as well. So you don't, that, that recycled Zoom X phone doesn't feel like Zoom X. It doesn't feel really bouncy. It doesn't feel like you can run fast in it. Um, it's it's fine, but if you can compare it with the original turbos, it feels nothing like it. Um, so I've used this shoe for about 50, 60K now, and um, that's varied between interval training to slower runs, um, and I've used it for a part run as well. Um, and what I'd say about it is that it's fine. It's a fine shoe, it does the job, it ticks a lot of boxes for people looking for daily trainers, um, but it doesn't excel in any way. I've not found anything in this shoe that I really think is impressive. I've not found much that I really dislike either. I just, it just doesn't do a lot for me, especially when you compare it with something like the Hocker Mac 5, which excels at speed and excels at that nimble versatility that means you can run faster in it. It just doesn't have any of that stuff. Um, when I've been running in the shoe on longer runs, it feels a little bit too firm for me. It's not the firmest shoe out there, but it's there's not a lot to it. It feels a little bit dull for me. It doesn't feel like it's helping me run faster. After the run, it feels fine. My legs feel like you know there's enough cushioning in it to 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 do the run. But equally, I don't feel like I've had any sort of benefits from this shoe either. Um, and likewise, when you go to faster paces as well, it doesn't particularly help but it's not particularly conducive to running faster you can train at a faster level in it but i definitely don't really want to I, don't, I wouldn't want to use this for my tempo training or interval runs because it just feels a little bit sluggish a little bit hard and a little bit dull for me so i think it's a shoe that is fine if you just want a daily trainer you're just doing general runs you like the look of the shoe a lot of people like the look of the shoe think it's a nice design and it's nice that it's got those recycled elements in it as well but for any sort of performance features whether that's running fast or comfort and cushioning on your long runs it just doesn't seem to have them very much um so yeah it's an okay shoe but it's just not that good for me i don't i don't particularly enjoy running in this shoe <music> 
Okay, so my verdict in these two shoes, probably quite easy for you to guess what my verdict is if you've watched the earlier part of this video. Um, I think that the Nike Pegasus Turbo Next Nature is fine. I think it's a competent shoe uh, and it does uh, an all right job at daily running, daily training. Um, and there's not, it's, there's not any major bad points to it. There's also just not any major good points to it either. If you got this shoe and you started training in it and you were only doing general daily miles, you weren't racing in it or you weren't doing interval sessions or you weren't going to go do a 30 mile run in it, I think you'd be more than happy with it. Um, but ultimately, in a performance way, in a comfort way, in a cushioned way, it just it's so far down the list for me in comparison to some of the other shoes there at the moment, especially when it comes to daily shoes because there are some fantastic options like the Hocker Mac 5. Hocker Mac 5 is by far my top pick for a non-plated daily shoe. The top pick for a plated shoe, and um, probably my top pick for a daily shoe, would be the Socony Endorphin Speed 3. It's just fantastic, that shoe. You can run all different paces in it. It's comfortable, it feels fast, lovely turnover, it's a great shoe. The Mac 5 is the, the closest you can get to that without having a plate in it. And I, I, you get a lot of benefits from the shoe just by how light and nimble uh, and, and just how nice it feels for turnover. It feels very efficient. Uh, and I have actually been doing a lot of my marathon training in this shoe, especially when it comes to uh, tempo training sessions or interval sessions where I want something comfortable, but I need to up the pace for those intervals. And it really is a fantastic shoe for this. If you were training a carbon plate shoe and you wanted a partner for that shoe to do your faster training in with. I think really the Hocker Mac 5 and the Endorphin Speed 3 are your two options or most recently released options. You can go for the early versions of those shoes. Those are the two options that you're going to go for. And really it comes down to if you want a, a plate in it or not. And if you like a more traditional feel, the Hocker Mac 5 just has a nice traditional, um, slightly more flexible feel to the shoe, which feels very comfortable but you get so much from the lightness of that shoe that you can really pick up the pace in it. So that's my um, verdict on the two shoes. I think you'd be fine with the Next Nature, but not be wowed. Hocker Mac 5, you're probably gonna be impressed by this shoe if you pick it up. So that's it from me. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos you've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. And don't forget that we also have our monthly podcast out at the end of every month. If you go to the caption below, there's a link to the latest podcast where you can listen on the podcast provider of your choice um, and hopefully you'll like it. Uh, and if you do like it, make sure you leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts um, so that we can get other people to see it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.